Our uh, Department of Transportation Secretary uh, Purdue is here. Uh, GMX Governing Board Chair Cancio uh, is here. And we also have a number of members from the uh, always uh, heavy-hitting Miami-Dade delegation in our legislature, led by our Senator Ana Maria Rodriguez. And we also have Representatives uh, Busada Cabrera, Porras, Rizzo, uh, Garcia, Basabi, and Barrero. So I want to thank them for uh, being here and all their great work over a, what was a very productive legislative session. Uh, so we're, we're here today to be able to announce that starting today on April 1st, and this is not an April Fool's joke, you are getting toll relief in the state of Florida for all of our commuters. So we were able in 2023 to do the most significant toll relief program in the history of the state. Uh, we were able to rebate 50 percent uh, of all the tolls for our commuters on a monthly basis. So all you had to do, you have your transponder, you go through, you click a certain number of times to meet the threshold so we know you're a commuter. Because, like, look, the visitors, we want them to pay, right? We'd rather have them pay than us. Uh, so, so they do that. But if you're here just working and you're getting to and from work and you're getting hit with these tolls, uh, we wanted to be able to provide relief. So that was very successful to be able to reduce. And in, in this area, you have people saving hundreds of dollars that year, uh, some even saved more than that because some are paying thousands of dollars in tolls, depending on what you're doing. Now, that's not the norm, but it does happen. So that is a way for us to provide relief for folks, given that we've been in this inflationary period now where you have groceries, all these other things. So it was really, really good. So we were able to come back uh, and do it again. And I think the, the great thing about it, so it'll start April 1st, you don't have to do anything. Uh, and you'll see it on your May bill to show up. If you reach that threshold where you, we know you're commuting, uh, you're going to get a 50 percent reduction. And the good thing is, if you look on this, it's not just so. So obviously we have certain FDOT facilities that the state of Florida operates, uh, as well as the Florida Turnpike. OK, toll relief there. Great. That's good. But and this is why this is such a good program. Uh, we have other um, FDOT managed lanes, the 95 express lane. Uh, you have uh, I-4 in Central Florida, 595 in South Florida, 295 in Northeast. All these other places uh, qualify for toll relief. Other toll roads and bridges that are not even necessarily state managed or operated, but yet here we come in saying, you know what, you should get relief on that. So you've got a lot here in South Florida, Rickenbacker Causeway, uh, Venetia and all those. But then even places like in the Panhandle, Garson Point Bridge, that's a stiff toll. People have to do use that to be able to go. There's other ones. So you look all throughout the state, people are going to be saving on all of those tolls. Everything up there will qualify. South Florida and Central Florida have the most of course, and I think the more, more people will save in those two regions than others. But if you also look southwest Florida at some of these bridges, the Sanibel Causeway, some people commute out there. You know, that place is, is a rebuilding after Hurricane Ian. You need that. You have St. Pete, Tampa. You have Selman, all these other places. So this is really, really good to be able to do that. And the guys at FDOT ran this program very well in 2023. You know, you think like, okay, you're doing toll relief. But when you have all these different people managing the tolls uh, to be able to say we're going to give relief for all of those, administratively, it's much more difficult to do that, uh, much easier if we're just doing our turnpike and, and doing some of the FDOT. Uh, so they were able to manage that very, very well. And so we're back again April 1st. This takes us all the way through the end of March of 2025. Uh, and look, I mean, I think people are going to want to see this continue. Uh, but at a minimum, we're going to do we got another year in the hopper that people are going to be able to save. So that's a really good thing. You don't have to do anything. All you got to do is just look at your bill. Uh, and it's it's if you've had 35 clicks going through any of these toll facilities, which you figure if you're working full time, you're going to do that. Uh, on a monthly basis, no problem. And it also includes if you're just doing leisure. That's the thing. Getting around this area just for leisure, you're paying tolls too. So so, so any commuter is going to hit that. 
And all you do is you just get the bill, you see it deducted. So, you know, maybe you save 50 bucks, maybe you save 100 bucks. I, it depends on how much you're doing, but, uh, but it's really, really good. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I thank the legislature uh, for stepping up and doing that. And it's, it's part and parcel of finding ways within our power uh, to be able to give relief for people. You know, now in the state of Florida, you don't pay any tax, no sales tax for any baby item. So people are doing that, diapers, all the stuff, uh, strollers, cribs. I mean, that's as family-friendly as you can be. So we have that. That's permanent. We've had a lot of great permanent uh, tax relief for folks that are really benefiting them. But this toll relief, I think, is really, really significant. So we're excited to be able to re-up this uh, for a second year. Uh, the other thing that we're also able to say, in large part because of working with the legislature to enact the, the program that we enacted last year, Moving Florida Forward, uh, that we are going to be able to, today's really a milestone day um, here, we're able to say that because of moving Florida forward, uh, the Golden, Gades, Golden Glades Interchange Improvement Project is commencing construction today. Now, this was not even supposed to start until next decade, uh, but we got with moving Florida forward, we've been able to accelerate so you see what the, what the rendering is going to look like. This is obviously a very uh, sensitive part uh, of this region. And so to be able to get this traffic flowing better is going to make a big difference. But because of moving Florida forward, we're looking at getting to projects through completion uh, seven to ten years quicker than what they otherwise would have, because there's a lot of stuff in the hopper, different parts of the state. I mean, this is obviously big down here. There's a lot of stuff in central Florida where you go. Some of these areas that have just exploded, like there's like backups, Polk County, uh, in and out of I-4, places like Champions Gate, Celebration, all these other areas. So, so we're taking that, accelerating it. And the thing is, is, you know, I've said many times, I don't go around to other states begging businesses to move here, begging people to move here. They just do. Um, and, and that's reflected in the numbers. Now, you'll have some like NBC News try to take uh, an incredible headline they tried to run trying to say people are leaving Florida in droves. And then they had to admit in the article we were number one for net in migration in the year that they're talking about. So I don't know how you try to do that. Bottom line is, is we're not asking for that, but we've had, uh, we've been the leader in net in migration. So we're going to need to have the infrastructure to support that. So we had a decision to make last year. We had this massive budget surplus. Yeah, we did $2.7 billion in tax relief. That's the most that's ever been done in the history of the state. Uh, yes, we were able to uh, manage the budget well. Yes, we were able to pay down debt. We've paid down 25% of the state's debt just since I've become governor. We have another $500 million in the hopper in this budget to accelerate even more debt repayment. So we're knocking out all that. But we also said, okay, we know we're going to have to to do this infrastructure stuff. Uh, so let's try to do it in a way where we're going to accelerate these projects and make a difference because you're talking about – when you're shaving off uh, seven years of traffic um, congestion, you know, that's a big deal. Just think how much time people spend in traffic and think accumulating that over many years. I mean, that's like seven, ten years. That's like the heart of, uh, of people's uh, careers with like a family and stuff. You want to be home. You don't want to you don't want to be sitting in traffic. So this is going to be a good project uh, starting way ahead of schedule. Uh, moving Florida forward, we had the, the initial funding last year and then the remaining this year in this uh, budget that's pending. And we're going through the budget. Obviously, we'll, we'll have that done in, in the relatively near future. Uh, but you're going to look at a lot of great projects as a result of this. And even with all of that, uh, we are still running some of the biggest surpluses that we've ever run in the history of the state. And they're the biggest surpluses uh, ever in Florida prior to 2019. Each year is. Now it fluctuates what is more, what is not, depending on the, how the revenue comes in. You know, we're getting 100, 200, 250 million dollars over in revenue. That's been pretty normal uh, over the last many years. But even now, uh, you see a lot of problems in other states with these massive budget deficits. Uh, some of these numbers are very eye-popping in the other states. That's not happening here. So we're doing all this, giving toll relief, giving tax relief, uh, making sure the budget's fiscally sound, 
yes, paying down debt, yes, running surpluses, but also meeting the needs uh, for, for infrastructure, which is really, really important. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to be able to make these two announcements. I think both of these are going to be very meaningful. Obviously, the toll relief starts today. People are going to get that on their bill starting next month, and they're going to see that immediately. This May project may commence today. Not going to be done by next month, but, you know, it's going to be done earlier than it would have been done had we not done the Moving Florida Forward program. So I'm really excited about it. Um, uh, I'm going to call up uh, some folks in a minute. I will just say, uh, you know, we've now been able to repatriate uh, over 200 Floridians uh, who were stuck in Haiti and trying to get out uh, back safely to the state of Florida. So I want to thank everybody that's been involved in that. Uh, we've got some more that we're going to be doing. I do think now you have more State Department involvement uh, in that, and, uh, and so th which is really how it should be, right? I mean, it's, it's odd. It's not the norm to have a state going into Israel and, and exfilling people or going into Haiti and exfilling its citizens. Usually that would be the U.S. government uh, that would do that. Uh, but that necessarily wasn't necessarily what was happening, at least with the speed and user friendliness that we had hoped would happen for our residents. And so we've stepped up and filled the void yet again. So, so we continue to see successful flights, probably have some more coming. But I also think if there are going to be big State Department flights, that hopefully will take care uh, of most of the remainder. So, so all in all, it was very good. And I'm proud of the folks who worked really hard to get that done. Not easy in that part uh, of the world right now. Also, I know they're doing a celebration in Miami Beach tomorrow about the spring break. You know, the bottom line is, is um, that that went very well here, uh, given what's happened in the past. And so it starts locally with the commitment. Uh, but, you know, at the state, we just said we want to be helpful. And so we provided the resources. And I think it was a great effort to, to just ensure the quality of life for the people that are living uh, in these communities. And you know what? The businesses did very well. Uh, they do a lot better when their windows aren't smashed in. I can tell you that. A lot of the restaurateurs were thanking me because they usually get damaged during this, and they didn't. So, uh, so, so good job, everyone. I know we had a lot of law enforcement involved at both the uh, municipal, county, and state level. Uh, those folks did a really, really good job and, and kept people safe. And I think people still had a lot of, lot of fun. Uh, I know business was still good. Uh, but we're doing it in a way that, that, that does maintain that, that critical order that we need for our community. So, so good job. Okay. Uh, with that, we're going to hear from some of our speakers today. So we'll start uh, uh, with the Lieutenant Governor. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here, especially um, in Miami-Dade, and this very important announcement that the governor is uh, proud to tout. Uh, toll relief is something that I'm very passionate about, Governor, and I think that the words toll relief to everybody in this room are extremely important. They're going to bring a tremendous amount of relief to so many people that are struggling, as you mentioned, under the weight of bite inflation, the cost of groceries, the cost of gas, all those things that create challenges for hardworking families. This project, this initiative is going to bring um, that much more to their bottom line every month. And, and what I'll say is toll relief, traffic, congestion, all of those things are a frequent topic of conversation, regardless if you're talking to a neighbor, if you're having coffee at uh, Versailles and Isla Canarias. Um, Governor, I know you like Cuban coffee, and I'm sure if you go to any one of those uh, spots, they will thank you for this initiative. Um, because, in fact, when I was in the legislature, and I want to publicly thank those that are here today, I know that they work hard each and every day to bring that relief to their constituents. Uh, but that was an issue that I was very passionate about, making sure that we tackle the issue of runaway tolls, making sure that we tackle the issue of rogue expressway authorities, making sure that they brought transparency and accountability to the toll payers. And so for our administration, I'm extremely proud that we've been able to work on this issue consistently. And what started as a successful uh, SunPass savings program has now uh, turned into this toll relief program that I hope legislators, the legislators that are here, I hope they're listening. I hope that you will continue it for many years to come because it is indeed important for our community. And really, as the governor pointed out, to every corner of our state, 
And so from the program that was issued uh, over $470 million worth of toll credits, that benefited over 1.2 million customers. And it saved up to an approximately $400. And, and as I mentioned, that goes a long way for hardworking families, especially um, with all that they're facing from the federal government and seeing those rising costs, inflation everywhere. And when you commute from Kendall to downtown, and I can tell you someone that did it for many years, um, you could pay up to $7 a day. And when you do the math, that adds up very quickly and can be up to $2,500 a year for, for families. So again, I'm proud that our Expressway Authority, in addition, our GMX Expressway Authority, that has tackled this issue, they themselves have put aside $10 million to launch their own frequent user discount program right here in Miami. They have tackled the issue of transparency. They've brought to light a lot of the issues from the previous um, Rogue Expressway Authority. So when you're traveling on one of the five GMX roads, you are going to see those savings and you're going to see new and improved transparency, accountability, because we understand that the toll payers are the ones that are, that are bearing the burden. Uh, so again, I want to thank the governor for his leadership on this issue. I want to thank the legislature. Uh, and the uh, two county commissioners, I know one is here, that have been um, obviously touting this issue as well. Uh, I understand how challenging it is at the county level, and the county has a lot of issues that they're dealing with, but this issue is important for your constituents, and I know you hear from, from constituents on this issue as well. So thank you all very much, and I appreciate uh, the governor's leadership on this. All right, thank you, Governor DeSantis and Lieutenant Governor Nunez. Your leadership has been instrumental, not only providing toll relief when people need it most, but also by strengthening and investing in our transportation system to continue moving Florida forward. With the great success of last year's toll relief program and the continued need to help Floridians stretch every dollar possible, I'm proud to help offer an additional year of the toll relief program for Floridians. Last year, FDOT was excited to be able to cut tolls in half for 1.2 million users. We look forward to providing another year and we anticipate that more SunPass users will take advantage of this great opportunity. When FDOT says we put communities at the center of everything we do, we truly mean it. We're not just putting money back in your pockets with toll relief, we're also saving you time by improving infrastructure with Governor DeSantis's Moving Florida Forward initiative. Right here in South Florida, one of these projects is the Golden Glades Interchange. If you live here, you know this interchange very well. The Golden Glades Interchange is the first of the 20 Moving Florida Forward projects to start construction. This interchange is highly complex and is one of the largest design bid build projects in FDOT history. The improvements we're making include 32 new bridges along with a direct connection between the Palmetto Expressway and I-95 and also includes innovative technologies like our wrong-way driving detection system, which has been hugely successful across the state. South Florida has been eagerly awaiting this project for many years, and while some improvements will be available at different points throughout construction, the entire project will take approximately seven years to build. So this is a massive project for the Golden Glades Interchange. While the Biden administration continues to prioritize ideologies over moving people and goods, I'm grateful we have a governor and a legislature who are focused on delivering actual infrastructure that improves Floridians' quality of life. Thank you to our District 6 FDOT team members who work tirelessly to make projects like this a reality, and also our team at Florida's Turnpike Enterprise who did a phenomenal job implementing last year's successful toll relief program. I know they'll provide the same great service again. Governor DeSantis, I'm excited your bold vision of moving Florida forward is now coming to fruition, and I'm excited FDOT is able to partner with you to bring another round of toll relief to Florida families. My wife and I have five daughters with two teenage drivers, so we greatly appreciate your investment. Thank you. Good afternoon, Governor DeSantis, Lieutenant Governor Nunez, FDOT Secretary Purdue, and the many public officials and community members uh, gathered here this afternoon. I'm Mary Lee Cancio. I have the honor to be the chair uh, of the GMX Governing Board. And thank you, Governor, for your appointment and um, was just recently confirmed by the floor of the Senate. I'm here along with the entire board of the GMX and today is a very special day. Um, Governor, South Florida, 
and South Florida residents and commuters here in Miami-Dade County are going to thank you. Miami-Dade County, Monroe County, this entire uh, South Florida area. Under the leadership of, of the governor, lieutenant governor, and all of our transportation partners, we continue to ensure adequate toll relief for commuters in South Florida. As a constant traveler on the roads, I know what it's like to receive an email or text message letting me know that relief is on its way. We, we started here in South Florida uh, in the GMX board uh, providing 20% relief. And every month we would get a text message saying, you qualified for that relief. Now I'm looking forward to a relief of 50%. That's going to be even greater. So a lot of commuters are going to have the same smile in their faces when they get that relief. Very easy, folks. You've got to use SunPass. If you don't qualify, you just use your tag or your license plate. So go and buy one of those Sun Passes. That's very important. You don't have to register. You just got to use Sun Pass. So, Governor, based on the sound business decisions by FDOT, the Florida Turnpike, and GMX, I'm very excited on what's to come. GMX remains later focused on identifying common sense solutions that enhance safety, improves mobility, and has the goal relieving congestion on our roadways. Toll relief is important for the South Florida community, and I'm so glad that GMX provides the perfect symbolism for continued relief for all those who use our state roads. The traveling experience in our expressways continue to improve as we listen to the residents and commuters of our community. As a governor, at the governor's direction and under the leadership of our governing board, we have empowered our interim executive director, Tori Alston, to continue working to provide additional relief to those who use our state roads. As board chair, I'm grateful for the collaboration with the Florida Department of Transportation, Florida Turnpike, and all our partners as we provide financially sustainable and safe roadways that deliver actual toll relief for the community. In closing, the GM, as GMX consider Considered in its upcoming budget, we are aligned with the state's direction and continue providing real relief for our residents and commuters. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Secretary, thank you all for being here today at GMX headquarters, and we appreciate your partnership and steady leadership. Now, I just wanted to say some words in Spanish, sure. if you allow me. Uh, quería traducir un poco de lo que pasó aquí eh, en la tarde de hoy, que el gobernador la vicegobernadora, el secretario del Departamento de Transporte, están haciendo un anuncio muy importante. Van a seguir con el alivio de peajes de un 50% para las personas que usan por lo menos 35 veces los peajes eh, aquí en el sur de la Florida y en todo el estado, no es solo aquí. En cualquier carretera donde hay peajes en el estado de la Florida, si lo usas 35 veces vas a tener un descuento. Lo importante es que usen el sistema de SunPass. Y también están aquí para anunciar en el día de hoy que están adelantados siete años en la construcción del Golden Glades Interchange, que es una área, como ustedes saben, que hay mucha congestión de tráfico, y están adelantados en casi diez años empezando eso inmediatamente. Y el gobernador va a seguir invirtiendo en infraestructura y en alivio de peajes para todo el mundo en el sur de la Florida. Thank you. So you see, I mean, this is going to have a big impact, certainly in South Florida, uh, other parts of the state as well, with the toll relief. We're really excited about that, and we're also excited that this project is moving now. And uh, we don't have, um, you know, we can't wait till next decade to start doing something that, that we know needs to be done, and that's going to be true for different parts of the state as well. You are going to see an acceleration uh, of projects that were not anticipated to be complete, some of these, in t for 20 years. Uh, you're going to see those moved up in the queue because we've dedicated more resources and we're pressing forward ahead, which is uh, which is what you should expect uh, to do. It's not, um, uh, you know, we don't run this operation like they run the federal government, I can tell you that. So, uh, all right, great. Well, I'm excited about today's announcement. I'm glad this starts in April. I know people want to get the relief, and uh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to sign up. Uh, all you have to, if you're a, you have a transponder, SunPass, or other program, all you do uh, they'll do all the work for you. You just realize the savings. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Well, so um, we initially in 22, we did something just with the turnpike. We did that administratively. Then in 23, we included beyond. That was the first time that's ever been done. So we're continuing doing that. So some of these, I mean, you have Cape Coral Bridge over in southwest Florida, not an FDOT. Sanibel, not FDOT. In fact, we rebuilt Sanibel Causeway after the hurricane uh, in, in, a, in a matter of a couple weeks. Uh, that was not a state road, and we, we don't manage the toll. Rickenbacker Causeway, um, all these different things um, are not – um, and most of the roads, honestly, if you look along South Florida, I mean, look at how many uh, different roads there. Don Shula, Dolphin, all those, not um, uh, FDOT managed, and yet we're including all those in toll relief. And so I think they've done a good job just administratively. That's a lot of moving parts, getting it, getting the refunds to the customers, and it'll be good. And we want to be able to have, uh, have folks save. I mean, look, there's expenses you deal with in life. No one wants to deal with that. I mean, obviously, we'd like to pay as less as possible. But just seeing these tolls get rung up, I mean, you know, it's not good. And it's just like, man, how, how much does it cost us to get to work? So for us to be able to returning half of that, I think, is really, really good. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. He said that didn't happen. He said he didn't do it. So which raises the question, either he's not being honest with the public or he really didn't know what was going on. And so my question would be, who's running the presidency? Is it a bunch of uh, a woke 20-something-year-old White House staffers that just put out uh, this drivel whenever they, whenever they want? Uh, so I don't know who's in charge, the fact that he's not owning up to it. I don't either way it's bad, either he's not being honest or he really didn't have anything to do with it. But what we did was um, uh, we had a, a big Easter egg hunt. We, I mean, kids were uh, didn't even change when they got back from church. They went in, they, they found a lot of Easter eggs, and it was like a massive amount. I told my wife, I said, you know, that's a lot. Um, and so they did that. And they were running around. And then it got to be, you know, we get in, you know, we had, a, we had a nice meal. We did all that. So then we get into later in the day. No naps. Just keep going nonstop. And I'm just like, you know, it's tough to keep up. But, but we, had a, we had a good, um, good Easter. And it's, um, it's an important, um, you know, the most important, you know, for, for, for Christians, the most important uh, holiday on the calendar. And, um, you know, when Biden did you know, was, uh, you know, I think it was ridiculous, but it does raise the issue. You know, you go back, you can see there's a picture that'll get circulated on the internet sometimes uh, of the New York City skyline. And I think it was from like the 1950s. I think it was Good Friday. And you had the buildings with lit up with crosses. You know, it was like big, big crosses. And that was not done, I don't think, by government. I think it was just done by, by companies or whoever was managing that, doing that. Now, you know, you would not see that, that type from corporate America or anything like that. So, so it shows you kind of, I think, the people that are gravitating to more what Biden's doing, um, you know, that is ultimately, uh, you know, a, a type of religion that they're trying to, to, to advance in this society. And, um, you know, I, I'm, for, I'm for the same values that founded this country, and that's how I view it. Yes, sir. Well, right. I mean, so so the issue is I didn't know. Yeah, I saw that. I think that was a play off the NBC article. But the thing is, is, you know, we've led in net migration. I mean, look, th this has always been a transient state. People come and go. That's normal. That's that happens in, in all states. But our state in particular has always had that. Uh, but we lead in net. And, and so that means that there must be a reason why people are wanting to do that. So for them to try to focus on, like, acting like that there's an exodus um, because it's hot, 
Uh, I just don't know. It's like, okay, someone buys a home in Orlando and says, well, I don't have access to the beach that I thought I would. Yeah, you bought a house in the middle of the state. I mean, that's just the way it works. So, um, I, but yes, I think our policies have attracted folks. First, they, living in Florida during COVID was like living in a different country if you were coming from Illinois or New York or some of those places. And you know how I know? Because people that implemented some of those policies sent their families to live in Florida rather than live under their, their oppression. So that was true. I think how we've empowered parents on education has been really important. Parents want to know that their kids are going to get an education, that they're going to have a say in the matter, that they're going to know what's being taught, and that they have options to be able to find the best school, but then also law and order and, and, and crime has been a big deal. Uh, crime was in terrible shape 2020, 21, 2022. They're saying now the statistics show around the country it's gone down. I don't know if that's true in some of those areas, uh, but I also know that you do have an issue in kind of run-of-the-mill crimes. Uh, they don't get reported as much in some of those areas. Like if you get mugged in L.A., that's like not even a big deal to them. Of course, you're not going to get prosecuted, right? Whereas here, I mean, we would we would take that seriously. But I absolutely think that the law and order commitment to public safety is a huge thing. Um, and yes, we um, don't have an income tax. Uh, and yes, it's um, it, it's it's hotter in the summer here than it is in some other places. I don't think that that's like, you know, it takes a great investigatory uh, journalistic enterprise to figure that out. Of course it is. Uh, that's just the nature of it. But all the more reason why what we did last week to make sure we're not going to allow these squatters to commandeer private property is really important because you do have people that will live here seven, eight months of the year. Maybe they live, go to Maine or New York or even can We got a lot of Canucks that come down here and own property. So you're gone for the whole summer. And again, this isn't most Floridians, but there we probably have more in our state that, that, that do that than just about any other state. You go and then you come back four months later and someone sets up shop in your house and then they're asserting rights against you. And then in some of these states, the property owner is the one that actually gets arrested when there's a confrontation. That's absurd. You don't have a right to squat in somebody's property. And so if you try to squat in the state of Florida, uh, the homeowner has a very quick remedy. You call the sheriff, and you guys will have a sheriff soon uh, here in this county. You call the sheriff, they send people, and they evict the squatters from your residence. That's the way it should be. That's how private property rights work. Well, but our kids' care has been very effective. I mean, I think if you look at what the legislature has done over the years, you know, they've really focused on uh, on helping working families uh, make sure that their kids uh, have have access uh, uh, to health coverage. And so, so I think that they've done a good job. The whole stuff with the with the COVID and everything, uh, you know, that was obviously not something that that was going to be sustainable. Everybody knew that when that was happening. Uh, so uh, I've supported uh, the, the kids' care initiatives, and I and I think that they've done a good job with it. Yes, sir. Sure. So th this is so this is in uh, in in Orlando. A city commissioner uh, has been indicted on felony charges, and so my authority as governor for countywide officials is a suspension authority that does not necessarily need to be criminal. Neglect of duty. If you read the cut, neglect of duty, drunkenness. There's different things they lay out for municipal officials. Uh, it's that criminal indictment that triggers that. So, so she has been indicted. She's facing felony charges. And so I think in every instance since I've been governor, when a local official, uh, a municipal official, has been uh, facing felony charges, uh, they've been suspended. And now what will happen is if she's convicted, then she's out uh, for good. If she's exonerated, then she can come back 
and potentially do it. Um, I think there's been a lot of buzz in that community. I think that there's a lot of problems uh, or a lot of concerning things with this with this conduct and this behavior. But that's for the courts to settle. Uh, what I do is when I see when I see somebody's been charged like that for felony offenses, uh, it's just a matter of course that we've done that, and so we did it in this instance. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye.